For Magma Engineering, I have purchased the Star Bullet Lube Sizer. This is the basic unit. Comes with a straight handle and a sizing die puller. You'd also have to purchase the sizing die itself. You have to tell Magma exactly the diameter of the bullet you're using. And it'll come with that die and some really shot pellets. And we'll go into that further, but the shot pellets are used to fill in the holes that are not going to be used to lube the bullet. This die looks like it comes with a lead bullet on, on the inside already. Well, this was a separate purchase. I also purchased the optional swivel handle because I find that more comfortable to use than the straight handle. And I purchased, let me move this out of the way. The heated base. Your loop sticks will go into this cylinder and what the heated base does it'll get the loop from warm to hot so that it's easier to pump and fill in the grooves. Now when it when you use it when the bullet comes out it will be ra rather warm to could be fairly hot but this is going to allow more consistent lubrication filling in the grooves because the lube goes in here the sizing die goes in here when you use it, the bullet will go nose down here, and the lube is, this pump pushes the lube into the sizing die, and it'll squeeze out through these holes in here. So I purchased the heated base just to get more consistent lubing of the bullets, and to make it easier to use because the warm lube is easier to pump than room temperature lube. And I purchased the air cylinder accessory. The way this works is your lube sticks will go in here and you have to apply pressure downward on the lube stick so it'll go into the pump area. Well the basic machine comes with a hand operated pressure that as you use it you have to crank this a few times every now and then to keep the pressure and if you don't what happens you'll start seeing that the lube is not getting into the lube grooves of the bullet. This air assembly which consists of a air cylinder and a regulator actually fits into the top so it uses compressed air to keep a constant downward pressure on the lube. That will give you much more uh, consistent lubing of the bullets. Now this is not an air pump you actually have to supply your own compressed air through this plug. This is a quarter inch industrial air compressor plug. And you can provide it either through a tank that you buy and you go someplace and have it filled with air and then you attach the tank to this and then you regulate the pressure here. Or in my case, I've got a, uh, an electric air compressor That I want to use to attach to here and that compressor will get pressure up to a, in its tank to 120 psi which is a lot more than what this is needed. This needs at least somewhere around the 50 psi maybe a little bit less but this regulates that. So I might have 120 going here but you use a regulator to get it to what uh, the instruction manual says. So this is what we'll be setting up and getting to work. It also comes with kind of a manual. This is a picture of the loop sizer with I think all the accessories, the swivel handle which I purchased, the air assembly which I purchased. I believe this is their automatic bullet feeder which I did not purchase. This is the heated base which I did purchase and of course that's the main unit. Here it talks about loading lube, installing a new sizing die. Talks about the heated base. I didn't really find anywhere instructions on how to actually install like the heated base. It comes with schematics. This is really a, a parts explosion diagram. Really not an installation diagram talks a little bit, it talks about the depth of the bullet punch 
need to push the bullet into the die to line up the grooves with the holes. Holes that you don't use, you need a plug with that shot. Well, we'll go through that. This is really the size and die puller, if you will. This is bullet feeder, which I did not buy. Now this is the heater base. Again, it doesn't tell you how to really install it. It just talks about uh, setting the thermostat on it. And this is their air cylinder, which can really consists of the cylinder and the regulator. This is the heated base. Really, there's no instructions for telling you what these various holes are for. But these three holes marry up to the bottom of the loop sizer. So it would get installed as such. I'm not going to install it now. I'm going to install the base to my bench first. Okay, this threaded hole here, I believe, is for their automatic bullet feeder. What I did was I just bought a um, quarter inch hex bolt. This is three quarter inches long. I think it's coarse thread. And I'm just going to put in here and just leave in here. I'm really not going to use it anything, but I'm, I'm using this bolt just to protect those threads and keep dirt and other junk out of there. So if sometime in the future I do want to purchase their uh, automatic bullet feeder, I'll just un unscrew this and the threads should be nice and clean. Not sure what these two holes are, but they get covered by this. These three or what you use to mount the heated base to your bench. Not sure where that opening is, but I'm sure it has to do with the heating unit. So um, let's, when you use it, just make sure that, that you don't do not cover up that opening. This is the thermostat. And that's just uh, telling you where the heating unit is on. And your on-off switch is actually in the cord. So I went to... Hardware store, big box store, and got these are quarter inch bolts. Seems to be the right size. The length really depends on what you're going to mount it to. Uh, this bench uh, top is fairly thick, so in my case, these are like three inch bolts, which should easily go through the base, the bench, and leave room for, and I'm going to be using locking nuts. So I'm going to go off camera now. I'm going to line this up. When you mount this, you of course I want to put it over here because then there's no room for the bullets to drop. Because the way the loop sizer works is you put the bullet nose down in here and it, when you press the handle, it drops, it gets sized, lubed, and then drops out of here. So you have to have it overhanging your back. So I'm just going to line this up, mark the holes, install the base, and then we'll come back to the camera. Okay, I've got the heated base installed. I've got the three secure bolts. If I could give a recommendation to Magma Engineering, I would recommend that this bolt be moved back maybe a quarter, half an inch. Because once you drill a hole for this, there isn't a whole lot of wood between the edge of the opening and here. In fact, you can probably see some of it where the wood is actually wanting to come out because the hole is so close to the edge. And maybe this one just a little bit here on the inside so I can use my ratchet wrench on it without using extension. Not a big deal. I can always put an extension arm on it. Um, but that one I would definitely move back a little. can't move back a lot because there's this opening in here. But that would be a recommendation. So the next thing I want to do is I want to install the base unit. 
I'm going to remove these three screws. They come pre-greased. If you're thinking about using some kind of a thread locker on this, I probably would not because most thread lockers are released by using heat and this is a heating unit. So thread lockers probably would make a mess instead of actually adding a benefit. So you line things up. Yeah. Alright, I've got the three screws partially in, or mostly in. I'm just going to hand take them down to where they seat without really tightening them. And I will slowly just, at one at a time, Get them snug. All right, that's good right there. The next thing I'm going to do is to prepare the sizing die. And my die came with a bullet already inserted into it. It really wasn't meant to be a bullet. So what I did was when I punched it out, I just use a brass punch and hammer is I looked over the bullet where it got sized to make sure I didn't see any extraneous marks. That could indicate there's a defect with the die. I also took my calipers and I measured the diameter in, in three different areas. Now this die is for 45 ACP. The diameter I wanted was 452 and when I used my calipers on this bullet in all three places, it was 0 .4520, 4520, 4520. So this is extremely well manufactured. Now what happens in the loop sizer, this is the top of the die, this is the bottom. You insert the bullet nose first, the punch will push it down to where the loop grooves line up with the necessary holes, and then as you continue pulling down on the handle, the punch won't push it any further, but it'll activate the, the lube pump, and the pump will push lube all in this recessed area here, and the holes that are open, the lube will go through those holes and to fill up the groove. So the question is, which holes do I use? Reading through the manual, it says all die holes must be plugged with number seven or number eight lead shot, which is provided with the die, except the row being used on a particular bullet. On single lube groove bullets, which both of these are, you will use only the middle row of holes. All right, so in this case, this is the top of the die, the wider part. That's the top row, that's the bottom row, that's the middle row. So for these bullets, I want to use that hole to insert the loop into the groove, which means I have to plug these holes with the shot provided. And we'll see that. It says most dies have three rows, which this one does. With two row dies, use the top row. So, but this is not a two row die, it's a three row die. But if it's a two row die, I would use a top row to fill the, the loop grooves. Bullets with multiple grease screws will use the appropriate rows for their design. Dies can be ordered with proper spacing for most bullets. So if you have multiple grooves, you before you order your die, you'd want to get up with Magma Engineering and give them the specifications of your bullet so they'll know where to put these holes. Now, both these bullets are 45 ACP. This is 185 grain. This is a 160 grain. Now in a place like this, it looks like the grooves are perfectly lined up with each other. But we got to remember that the bullet is inserted into the die nose 
first. So as you can see, the grooves no longer line up. Now, that doesn't mean you can't use this same die. It means that the punch that pushes the bullet into the die will have to be set at a different depth for one bullet versus the other. Otherwise, if you use the same setting, when you try and apply lube, it's either not going to go in because it's impacting the cover by the bearing surface, or if it's not low enough, you're going to end up putting a bunch of lube over the nose area. All right, at this point, let's go ahead and fill the holes. I've already done it. I've filled these two holes with the shot. I filled these two holes with the shot, so I just have these two to go. In terms of plugging the dies, instructions say use the shot provided, which is generally number seven and number eight lead shot. And use a brass hammer punch to firmly seat the shot. Use two shot pellets if necessary. On this particular die, I only use one pellet per hole because after I seated one, I looked inside and even though there's a little space left, there wasn't enough space for an entire pellet. So if I recess these further in and put another shot and pounded it in, it'll actually come out the other side, which you don't want to do because then as you size the bullet, it's going to get scored because of the protruding lead. So at this point, let me get the sizing die set up in the vise and let's plug these two holes. All right, well, I've got a brass punch. Uh, this happens to be 532nd, but I don't think that's critical. Okay, again, the shot was provided with the die. Vice holds it pretty firmly, so I don't have to hit it really strong because, again, this is lead shot going into a steel opening. Now, if you can see, as the shot hammered in, kind of flattened out, and most of the shot went into the hole, but some got caught on top. And because it's sitting there, it's not allowing me to push the shot all the way in. Plus, I don't like the fact that it's there because there's a small, I don't know if you can see it, there's a, you can see a separation there. My concern is, over time, if this leg gets loose, it's going to get mixed in with the lube. And of course, the purpose of the device is to shove the lube down these, down the openings. And so this lead might migrate toward those openings. And plug them. So I'm just going to use a metal pick. Let me remove that little ring of lead. I want to make this more flush. Since the die is circular or a cylinder, let me get the edges. And it feels pretty flush. I don't know if you can see it, but I picked up the uh, residual lead with a piece of transparent tape, but it's, that's right, that's what came off when I pushed it off. I'm just going to discard it. And let's do the next one. And what I want to do now is just look inside and make sure that the lead is not protruding through. It's not those two, not those two. And all right, so I'm done plugging the holes that will not be using.
And the next thing I want to do is get a measurement that will help me set the proper depth of the punch. It's in the instructions. Place the bolt to be lubed next to the size and die and line up the lube holes next to the lube grooves and the bullet. Alright, remember, this is the top of the die. The bullet goes in, nose first. So what I need to do is raise the bullet until the groove is lined up with that opening so I can get the proper measurement. Now, I've already done that. And what I did, I have some uh, feeler gauges. And I, got, I went ahead and put, to, put them together to do this measurement. So I just kept stacking gauges until I had the lube groove at the same height as the openings. Now the measurement we want is, and I'll read it again, measure the distance from the base of the bullet. Okay, the bullet's upside down. That's the base. This is the top of the die. So we want that distance from the base to the top of the die. All right, I get, for me, this bullet, this die, I get 26, 30 seconds. So I need to write that number down. Now the way I want to make sure they're the proper depth, I took my largest brass punch that I have. If you remember, my distance was 26, 30 seconds. So I put that tape so that it's at 26, 30 seconds. What I'm going to do next is complete the setup of the air pressure assembly. Now the instructions say that the air pressure assembly replaces the manual pressure assembly and 99% of that is correct. There are a couple parts that you actually have to remove from this assembly and reuse on the air pressure assembly. So what we're going to do first is remove the existing standard pressure screw assembly. We start off by loosening this rather large screw cap. I want to remove this because we actually use this on the air pressure assembly. And there's a threaded top. We're going to actually insert that upside down and screw it onto the spring assembly. If you were not using the air pressure assembly, this is essentially how you would install a new lube stick. Alright. Now this is the you will manual spring assembly. If you aren't using the air pressure assembly, you would use a small lever provided with the loop sizer, where these are attached, and you would screw down on this, which would compress the spring, which would push down the loop. So what we need from this 
is this white plastic cap, if you will. And I don't know if you can see it, there's a washer there. So as you can see, this is rather greasy, which is why I'm wearing the gloves. So I'm going to go off camera and just unscrew this screw so I can get to the washer and this plastic part. So it's the washer and the plastic part that we'll use on the air assembly. We will not be using this screw. I was getting ready to put it all together, but I found some discrepancies between the actual equipment and the diagrams. It shows for the standard pressure screw assembly that there's one washer attached to this part. This part is actually S107. There's actually two washers. And when I look at the parts diagram for the air pressure assembly, this little hex nut right here is not listed as a part. So what I'm going to have to do is let's take this plunger off. So I want to give Magma Engineering a call tomorrow and find out do I use both these washers or just one of them and what do I do with that hex nut. Alright, I was able to get up with Magma Engineering. They answered all the first couple rings and they were able to get me up with somebody who was able to answer all my questions, so that's a good thing. We're now going to take these parts that came off of the standard pressure screw assembly and install them on the air pressure assembly. So we'll remove this screw. Remove the aluminum piston. Make sure that this nut is tightened all the way up and then we pull down to expose the plunger and then we install Neural knob. This is the knob that's used to attach the assembly to the basic unit. We now install these parts. I'm going to get these hands tight. Now it is this part that's actually going to push down on the loop sticks. Let me get one real quick. I'm going to actually push down in this manner. And we install the piston. Once it is on, take a half inch open wrench and then just tighten this nut up against the piston. Doesn't have to be gorilla tight. Alright, for now I'm going to push this back in to protect this rod from dirt. But when we install it, we're actually going to pull this all the way down and install it to make sure this makes contact with a loop tube. That way we're making sure there's no air between the piston assembly and the loop tube. As a reminder, this is a one quarter industrial plug, so you'll need a quarter either universal or industrial coupler and that is how and then this of course would go off to your source of compressed air
and we're now going to install the sizing die into the unit. The instructions say to put some a little bit of grease, a little bit of oil on these two surfaces, and you want to run your punch all the way up. Another thing I do is the opening for the lube to come out is right down inside there. I don't want to put my open holes directly across from that. The reason being, uh, as the bullets get pushed down, as you transfer from one bullet to the other, that opening is going to get exposed somewhere around the after it leaves the base of the bottom bullet and enters the nose there at the top bullet, and grease is one that's going to ooze into that opening. So to make it a little bit more difficult, I take the holes that are closed and I put them opposite this opening. I'm just going to use a rubber mount to finish pushing this down. Now, I do not have a bullet in there, and that's on purpose, because I've decided to change the way I set things up. What I do now is I would actually put a bullet, I'd make sure this is raised all the way up. I put a bullet in here, and then I take my little stick where well, I measured off the distance from that mark to the end is the same distance here. That's my X in the instructions. And I would push the bullet down, including compressing the spring. And I've come up and I put my stick in to see if it's at the mark yet more than likely it's going to be sitting above. So I'll unscrew this a little bit, do it again, and include as though you were trying to grease the bullet. Check it, run the punch down, and keep doing that, not just touching here, but compressing it. Making the measurement down, compressing it until I get to that mark. At that point, I will run this nut up and tighten it down. Now also at this point, once you have this, they recommend that you measure the distance between the top of the die and the bottom of the punch. That way, when you if you swap out dies and come back to this one, you can easily get that distance. I tried to measure it, and I got a measurement, but I decided to use a an adjustable parallel. All right, well, this is an adjustable parallel. Basically, you have two blades that can slide and therefore change the height of these two parallel surfaces, this top one and this bottom one. So I just slid them until I got a fit between here and here. Now, for those who are observing, you could probably notice that this blade is shorter than this blade. So I actually ended up having to take a blade off of one of my parallels, a blade off the next smaller parallel to get this height. I could not get the height just with this and its partner, but this one and its partner blade, well, I was able to get it, but these two openings, only one opening was over this blade the other was off here in the, with no support. So when I tightened it down, it wouldn't stay tight. So I took the blade off a longer one, the blade off a shorter one. That way these two screws are over this one. And so when I tighten them down, it, this blade stays put. Now we're going to install the air pressure assembly. Again, this is the device that will keep constant pressure on the loop stick as we're using the sizer. So you take your loop stick. This is a 1 inch by 4 inch solid stick. It does have a little indent 
at one end. I want to put that indent at the top. So you insert your stick. And now we want to screw on this assembler. The way we want to do it is we want to pull the piston down and insert it such that as we install this, there's no gap between the lube stick and the piston. The problem is, this is rather tight, and as you try to insert it, it's just going to collapse on us. So what we're going to do is go ahead and connect our air pressure to the assembly, allow air in, so keep the piston down. And of course, when you attach compressed air to it and let the air through, it's going to dry this out. So you obviously don't want this pointed in anything. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to pull it out all the way and take it in just a little bit. Because I should hear the piston push out completely when air is supplied. Instruction manual says that the air here should be between 20 and 50 psi. We have a regulator here to control that. I also have a regulator on the compressor. I'm going to set this here. That way when air is provided and the piston is pushed out, it shouldn't cause any issues. Alright, so let's insert this. Alright, it is touching the loop step. So I've got it in there. There's no gap between the piston and the loop stick. Obviously, there's too much space here. So, what we do now is disconnect the air. What you do is you cut it off at your source, let it go down to zero, and then disconnect it from the pressure assembly. So we've cut the air off at the source to relieve the air out of the cylinder. Pull down the regulator and just start turning until the air is, is released. At this point, okay. At this point, we're going to completely screw this in. It's going to be a combination of screwing this in, screwing the assembly in. All right, so I have the air attached. The regulator on my compressor I've set to a little over 50 psi and the regulator here is sitting at around 45 a little over 45 psi so what I'm going to do now is plug in the heated base and let it as the instructions say cycle off and on uh, I think the base is thoroughly heated up uh, one thing I learned was this light here really is not an on-off light. It's more like a thermostat light. If the light is on, it's applying additional heat. If it's off, it's not. So this really doesn't tell you whether the base is on or not. We know we already have a bullet in there. Let's apply the pump to it. And then let's get more bullets and start feeding them through and see what results we get.